Gear 5 came out. And believe it or not, I wasn't too thrilled about how it was animated. Yeah, it was just whelming, huh? Huh? It's whelming. You wasn't I wasn't overwhelmed or... No, so like... (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and what do you what, what do you, what do you say, Irby? Help before you go with the the, the jokes. What Ooh. do you say after that? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. No, no, no. After that, bro. Like for the non-binary people. Hmm. I would just say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and keep the saying going. Keep canceled. Moving. We're done. We're canceled. I Welcome mean, back to the sh- <laughs> That's what to say is been, so Welcome back to the shop. I'm your it's host like Sinji with me. Can't misquote it. <laughs> What's up? This is like a quote. You can't misquote it per se. Yo, I think you can now. I think they're about to cancel the quote. It may not be correct, but you know. Damn it, you, you guys are trying to you guys are trying to change history. Can't you just go change in history? History doesn't change. It does. History always alters, and it's always written by the viewpoint of the victors. So it may not be the complete story. Hey. But, you know, that's where you go back and you look at the document and stuff, and like, oh, they actually knew about this, or this, that, and the other. Justice is always determined by the winner. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Well. I'm your host, Sinji. With me, as always, my co-host, Erpe. What up? Thank you, people. Thank you. No, Irby, do it right. Do it right. Erpe! I got you, dog. Don't worry. No. I was doing something different this week. Try to switch it up. I'm sorry. Wrong button. Wrong button. That's why I did the crickets for you. Whoa, whoa, uncalled for. Irby, you got a flavor this week? I do, dog. It's, um, I'm going to give it to my boy Jim Woo. Man oh, died. Did you, did you listen to, um, not, uh, Seven? Yeah, he died, but he's back. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. He he had his heart stabbed out, but he's back. So I'm like, huh? Because he had another one, like DJ my man, Khaled. My man Necromancy himself. Yeah, arise. Yeah, I was like, oh man, and he got all the restrictor plates off. So I'm like, Shh, my boy, good. Yeah, my boy Egris can talk now. So what's up? He alright. He light, light work. Nah, Egris. Egris been there since day one. Has he? I don't recall. He's been since since he got uh, the necromancy powers. He's been there since day one. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm not too sure. Trust me, I am. I've read it multiple times. Hmm, really? Mm-hmm. Maybe just keep reading it wrong. What? I don't know how how your educational system is over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Because <laughs> I don't know where. Uh states and countries are or how many continents there might be i think i need to say all that (laughs) doesn't mean i don't know how to read i don't know dog (laughs) i just uh was it your flavor (laughs) my flavor is coming out of a webtoon called teenage mercenary and it is the specific moment where like um He's training, I, th- I think it's Ejin, but it could be Ijin. Ajin Guild? No, no, Ijin. Like, so I J I N. What do you think that, how do you spell that out in Korean? How would you I J I N. I have no idea. The entire time I was saying Ejin, but then I thought about it and I was like, it could be Ijin, maybe. I don't know. But he's been like, volunteering and like training with like these bodyguards crew and like he was part of like team two and like these 
other crew, I won't get too far into the story because like it's a little complicated. But like this other crew is like, ah, you guys aren't sufficient enough to watch, um, be her bodyguard because you guys let her get kidnapped. And then they're like, said, let's see who is sufficient. Let's have a sparring match. But it was like, ah, but we can't watch her because we're team three. We're in charge of watching her, uh, and that'll hinder our performance and it was like well team two isn't let's do this and then like my man Ejin was like there seems to be misunderstanding I am part of team two so then first guy he goes against boom puts him down easy and they're like yo go Ejin show him for us we, we can do it and they're like my turn my turn and then Ejin turns around he's like next and then he's he beat two more people, but like it was the next part. I was like, "Yo, my man." Yeah, it's like um, I think you enjoy because it it's not like weak hero, but it's kind of like weak hero, but it's not like weak hero. Yeah, it has a high school student, but like there's no bullying. There's a little bit of bullying, but that that's that's just introduce it. How fucking dare you? Wrap it up. I you know. <laughs> Wrap it. Up. He said it's just a flavor. Hurry up. <laughs> Don't be limited to me. We have a short episode this week. Is it short? So yes. Maybe I have a whole other thing to talk about then. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. All right. Let's go on again into this episode of Buddy Daddies. Everyone will be hypocrites. So, um, let's see. Is that the right one? Hmm, I think it is. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's weird. Episode 11, right? Plot twist, he didn't watch it. Yeah, episode 11. I did watch it. Okay. I was like, wait, I feel like I've seen this last week. So, um, so they're all disheveled over Mary being gone. And I have, a, I have this is what I've watched. I was like, I had a feeling. I was like, oh, Mary might just run away to go see her papa's. But I don't know. It's like, huh, maybe not. So they're sulking all day and night. And eventually they're discussing to get rid of the apartment. And they're splitting up. Mm-hmm. And so Ray was a smoker. But he didn't smoke because he had Mary. And now he's like, here, you keep my lighter, Kazuki. Nice little parting gift for the boy. For, for kind of sad for Ray. Just give up smoking. Poor Ray. Poor, Ray. And he's not even there. He he's hurt. I see it in his eyes. And um, yeah, Kazuki's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go leave, do some work. And um, so then Ray he, he goes back home. Uh, let's see. And Mary's like, I miss his, my papa's. And yeah, Ray goes back to his father. I meant to say, he's like, I miss his, my papa's. And. Ray's, Ray's father's like, oh, you still can't get back to work because you still got ties you need to cut. I'm like, oh, this man, I think he just wanted to kill um, them anyway because mm-hmm. they took away his son. They made his son um, find purpose and other stuff without him. So he's like, oh, yeah, I think that was another undertone. And um, so then, like, he runs out. Because the father said she's a distraction. And he's like, please, Father, no, don't kill them. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Anytime you see that, you know, it's always a death that's going to happen. So then he rushes out, calls Koski, and tells tells him to get to uh, Mary. And then the assassin dude shows up at her mother's doorstep. I'm like, oh, man. She's like, oh, oh, this must be from so-and-so. But, like, I feel like they 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 would have called and told her that, Stuff was on the way or something, so she just opened the door and she gets shot. Pew pew, pew crazy pew. assassin man. I'm like, oh goodness. And what the del- delivery man delivers at like eight or nine o'clock at night? Like, <laughs> come on, who's doing that? Well, maybe Amazon, but you know, they do, they they do, do say it. by the end of the day. They don't. Uh, I think the laser had one before. It was like nine nine o'clock. I've had one super late before. Yeah, I feel like they were just, <laughs> they were supposed to get there earlier, but then they just, like, fell off or something, or something happened. And they're like, I'm just going to deliver these packages at my leisure. So, that's what I think. 
And then, um, and so Kosky shows up. He, they start fighting. He gets shot. He calls the cops. And um, I thought this was like a high IQ play move. The guy's talking to Kazuki, he's giving his monologue, and he's like, oh. He's like, yeah, I'm just off for time. And he's like, hey, Ray, now, shoot. And he moves out the way. I'm like, oh, I was looking for Ray to be there. I was like, there's no way Ray got there that fast. Nope. Yeah. And so so then my boy Q comes up. He's playing the, the sounds. He's like, the police are here. I called 911, and the real police were supposed to get there. Um, but they didn't get there because it was just my boy Q, but they eventually showed up. And so they leave, they go to the safe house. Q apologizes. She's like, oh, this is my fault. Like, I thought if I, if she would have known or she could have got out, like it would help and this, that, and the other. And he just made some wrong decisions and got that woman killed and he got blood on his hands. Yeah, he said, he's sorry, but you know, I don't know. I don't know if I would forgive him. But yeah, so essentially the next part, they're coming to terms with Mary. And they're like, I want to, she can't be here. She got to go to an orphanage and this, that, and the other. And Kazi is like, we'll fake her death. And then she'll have a life without us. And Ray's like, I want to keep her. I'm like, oh, okay, Ray. Ain't show this much emotion the whole time other than the field day. True. Yeah, he's like, yeah, Ray, I want to, I want to raise Mary because, um, essentially made him feel again. And Kazuki, he doesn't want that. Thinks Mary could do better without them. And then they come together and they, they want to work to keep Mary. And then, that's kind of ends. I think something worth mentioning was that while they were in their fields about Mary being gone. Uh, Ray, first of all, Kazuki pretended dust got in his eye cleaning her room. Mm-hmm. And Ray saw her rubber ducky and, like, went to sleep while touching it with a smile on his face, like a half half smile. It's like, oh, Ray. Yeah. But yeah, the, the hitman was crazy. He's like, oh, the police are here, so you got to tell him her last words. I'm like, man, this guy's sick. Sick killer. <laughs> Well, he said in the car with Ray that, like, he doesn't really care about all this stuff. He just wants to, like, he just finds killing interesting or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, sick weirdo. <sighs> yeah, well, this show's going to be over soon, next episode, because I don't feel like it's going to renew. Because it definitely ain't a banger like, um... My girl Anya and Spy Family, so No, it's not. It's a it's a one season Yeah. One hit a quitter. Definitely ain't that cool. Um if I felt they would have shown Mary doing like more stuff or like if Mary was like um if they was going out on missions and Mary would like sneak along and help and do do that, so Mm. Oh. Um, just to give us like a little break between Buddy Daddies and um, Arista Kime. Mm-hmm. I forgot to mention, and like, I, I guess people who know me would probably be surprised that this wasn't my flavor of the week, but Gear 5th came out, and believe it or not, I wasn't too thrilled about how it was animated. <laughs> Yeah, it was just whelming, huh? Huh? It's whelming. You wasn't I wasn't overjoyed? overwhelmed or... No, so, like... <laughs> if you, like, read anything regarding it, you'd know that, like, Gear 5... Gear 5's inspiration comes off from Tom and Jerry. Like, Oda loves, like, Tom and Jerry, and, like, he wanted to make Gear 5 more... Uh, free spirited, I guess nothing, nothing too serious, and like he wanted to like that. That's where he got his inf- inspiration from. So like, I think the design was a little inspired by like Dragon Ball, the way Luffy's hair turns white and like almost Super Saiyanish. But uh, the car, the cartoon aspect, 
in the manga, like you can see everything very clearly because it's panel, 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 panel with like still pictures. But I think they had so many people working on this the past seven months that like some of it was just hard to keep up with. Like it was just like a little over the top cartoony. It was just like I get the inspiration, but like did it have to be so much? Would you say it made you sad? No, it didn't it make me sad, but I feel like it's one of those things where, like, less could have been more. You know what I mean? Mm, I don't know. I think you're a little sad, my guy. Like, um, I'm not saying you don't watch the freaking episode, but, like, if you go to, like, YouTube, the Crunchy Rolls YouTube, you'll see, like, a, a little bit of clips. Uh, like, one minute, two minutes, and, like, if... Just just watch it on your spare time and let, let me know if you agree it was a little over the top. That was completely misplaced and uncalled for. <laughs> yeah. I said yeah. nothing. That's that's like a when you finish talking kind of sound. Yeah, I was just uh tell you wrap it up, my guy. How dare you? <laughs> There's enough Luffy talk on here. If anyone's gonna slander Luffy, it's gonna be me. I'm not even slandering Luffy. I'm slandering the animators. Is Luffy not animated? The form is great. Maybe slander. I'm just hoping yeah. in the future they like ease up a little on it. They won't. They, they prob- never ease up. They probably won't. Never ever. Yeah. Okay. On to the next debacle here. Aristocrats, otherworldly adventures, servant gods who go too far. Season 1, Episode 8, The Royal Academy. So, yeah, this episode is uh, pretty, pretty, uh, I don't know. I feel like lackluster. But yeah, so Xanbe starts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what have we been watching here this whole time? You know what I'm saying? We're pretty yeah. much just like trying to get to the end and see if it ends up being worth it. Yeah. It's like one of those ones where like, you're like, oh, this one just might be heating up a little bit, heating up. And then you're like, nope, when is it going to heat up? But yeah. So exam, he takes the exam. And it's like, oh, this exam should take you like two hours. And he takes it like 30 minutes because he knows everything and he does all the magical stuff. And I'm like, oh, my man, this is like really, you know, he's really OP doing this. So so then um, we found out my boy Kaying, um has to do a mag- magical aptitude portion. And they're like, oh, yeah, use the use spell. He's like, hey, he used weak spells to do t- the target. I'm like, oh, okay, what giant spell is he going to do now? <laughs> so my boy ends up making, like, a blue fire bullet and just blows through everything, blows up the wall. He he only did that because, it's like, oh, they had a magic barrier in place, but there wasn't a magic barrier. Well, there was, but he was just too strong for the barrier. And so he blew it up, and all the other kids were just looking atrocious. And he's like, oh, this is what normal kids would look like. I'm like, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, so then you get to the sword portion. And um, my boy Claude's there. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I want to spar with you, Cain. And they're like, oh, yeah, let's spar. So he's using the spar. And then Cain uses boost. And then Claude uses boost, and then it turns out to like this fool like on battle. They're like flying all over the place, and and people can't see, they can't keep up. It's like wow! And it's, so this was almost my other flavor of the week when um, the examiner steps in. I'm like, hey, that's enough. He's like, you're doing a little too much. All the kids here were traumatized, which was funny. Made me laugh. Um, but yeah. Claude definitely wants to go on an adventure with Cayenne just so he can see him fight. Yes. Yeah, and then so the test is over and Cayenne gets home. And I, he's like, oh, I think I placed, but like, I feel like uh, I feel like he should be too strong to actually get in, <laughs> you know? There's like, this. 
did we both watch the one show where the oh i think it's the wise man's grandchild where he actually becomes a teacher yeah yeah i, uh, he, th- I thought that was gonna happen the, yeah the teacher of the um he just i think he just i don't know if he was a teacher but it's like more of like the magical club he got in there if that makes sense. Like, he was teaching kids spells on the side. Yeah, I know they made him the leader of a club. Yeah. But I thought they gave him a class, too. Yeah, they gave him... That was a classroom that he did. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think... He, he didn't teach anything, but they met in the classroom and he taught him there. Gotcha. Yeah. So. I okay. thought that's oh. what they are going to do with my, my boy Kime. They, sh- they probably should have, because he definitely doesn't belong in there. Uh, so, yeah, then there's a, um, there's a meeting with the king and they get to talking and like, oh, Cayenne, uh, what interest them did you use? Oh, I used the south interest, which all the nobles were supposed to take place in the, in, in the north entrance. And I'm like, I'm like, huh, separation of nobles. And the, the one examiner was complaining about him at the end, <laughs> which was funny. Mm-hmm. And so he has to give a speech because he's the, the top of the class. And so he gets a speech. I'm, I did have a thought, like, why didn't they announce this man as a baron? I I thought that, too. But <laughs> if later on, he, like, when the three brats are bullying Kakro, he mentions that, like, noble status doesn't matter in the school. Or it's not supposed mm-hmm. to matter in school, so maybe that's why they didn't introduce him as Baron. Maybe. I don't know. But yet, yeah, so um Yeah. He gets his speech, the king comes out and the king just starts hitting him on the back and just like talking and this that, and the other and just slap my boy in the back. And I'm like, Oh man, my like, king, is he is he gonna say something? He goes, I hit my boy. So, so then they picked their course of the studies for the school year, and this is the fight that you jumped ahead to say, a little time traveler, you. And those three little twerps are there, and they're they're harassing his friend, Kain's friend. Kain steps in, and he. He says the whole spiel about, yeah, classes matter, nobles, la di da Uh Then Telesti and Silk come in, like, oh, do I have to tell my fathers? And then, you know, the little twerps run away. And so then they, they talk to the girl, and this is when Kanye hears a mysterious voice. And he has to uh, go to the library and talk to him. And he meets... I think he meets like, is it? I don't know if that's the founder yet, but it's like someone that knows about him. Or, right. yeah. Hmm. So I, I feel like it's like one of those like, you know how like Minato did that thing for Naruto where he could talk to him eventually when he showed up. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was the case here. Might be one of those ones. I don't know. We'll Possibly. See. Yeah. Yep, that's that. I'll be over here soon to torture. Hey, I mean, the gods mentioned something happening soon, so unfortunately, I think it's going to happen last episode, and it's going to be like, oh, next season. No, it's not going to get renewed for next season. <laughs> it's done so for me. <laughs> uh, you know what I wish had an- uh, another season? What? Remember Lo. Le- Luke, Lug, Lug. Yeah. The really modest guy that came from like the boonies, something like that. Lloyd. Lloyd. It might be Lloyd. The kid was just like really OP, but were like really, really nice and assumed everyone was like, he was just weak. Yeah. The, um, the Luke. So that's the one that, uh, the assassin one. No, no, not that one. Then the the one that's a uh, suppose a boy from the boonies. Yeah, Lloyd's the yeah Lloyd's that one. Yeah. Yeah. So. I I wanted that one to get a second season. I enjoyed that one. 
It was pretty pretty entertaining. Like he um yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. I I just could tell by the, the pace and whatever that I don't think it was getting a, another one. Which is unfair, but you know, yeah. here we are. Shall we get into some Vinland saga? Did you read yeah. Did you read Chojin? I didn't read Chojin. Uh no, I didn't read Chojin. Okay, all right, no Chojin. All right, Vinland Saga, episode four, A True Warrior. Okay. There is a lot to talk about in this, and there's also not a lot to talk about in this. So let's just get to it. Thor's was still destroying people left and right with his fist. But Bjorn, um, he ate that berserker mushroom, and he went berserk. But even he went down and... He went down with a two-piece. So when um, Askeladd wanted to capture the kids to sell them, Bjorn actually got back up. I, do you know how to properly say his name? I think it's Bjorn. Bjorn? All right, I'll say Bjorn. It's not Bjorn. It's like Bjorn. Bjorn? It's like the B&J's merge. I'm just going to say Bjorn. You can say Bjorn. Bjorn. Or, you know. Bjorn. Yeah. Uh, he's not going to be important in a few sentences, but <laughs> yeah, he gets back up and then like while As- Askeladd is set up laying down the the planks to cross over, freaking Thor sends Bjorn across the freaking the way and like smashes through one of the planks, and then he jumps all the way to the boat where. He's ready to, like, you know, face off with the guys. Thoris ends up challenging Askeladd to a duel with their freedom at stake, and Askeladd accepted. Um, They did have guys still up with arrows aiming at them, but they couldn't shoot unless Askeladd gave the signal. With a short conversation with Askeladd, Thoris figured out that if Loki was the one who set this up, and once they once they s- settled on the duel and got ready, Aslak cut the freaking rope on the sail, which dropped the sail. And in that brief time, he ducked under the sail and tried to cut Thor's. But Thor's, with experience, reacted the time and the cut was shallow. From then point on, it was just... Uh, Askeladd was on the defensive with Thor's overpowering him, but like he still managed to block everything. Well, he thought he was blocking everything, but Thor's was actually aiming for the weapon. Um, once Askeladd realized that Thor's was aiming for the weapon, he used the weapon against Thor's. So like he positioned his weapon to break Thor's um, blade, but then he ended up swinging ro- wide, and Thor's hit the weapon out of his hand, kicked it up by the hilt to his feet, and then held the sword at his neck. And Asla is like, oh, this is what he wanted all along. With that being said, Majorum woke up and he couldn't, since Asla wouldn't admit defeat because he looked bad in front of his men, he was trying to force Thor's to kill him. Majorum got tired of waiting and jumped across and took the knife from Thorfinn and held it at his neck and became a hostage situation. Thor's ended up having to give up and Asla admitted that he lost the duel and he gave the signal for the arrows to rain down on him. Thor's asked leave to take his head to the leader of John's Vikings so they don't suspect that he fled and attacked the village. Um, Thor's also asked Asla to like keep his promise and like let them go. He agreed. Well, I actually I can't tell if he agreed. I just you just see them on a boat later. But um Thorfinn runs to his dad and like hugs him goodbye. Thor smiles and that's how we lose a great Viking warrior. Retired Viking warrior, but a great warrior of the sea. While they're doing while they're sailing away with the boat attached. Thorfinn actually snuck onto the boat. He was crying, but we didn't know he was on the boat. And this is where 
I asked earlier is like he's on the cutscene he's with Asalad or Askelad, however you say the guy's name. Why is he there? Why why is he with them? Because I'm assuming Asalad's the one who kills Thor's and he's gotta know that the kids kids has it out for him. So when he comes out they notice that he they like, yo, Aslat, come come back here. The kid snuck onto the boat. And it's like, oh, is he going to kill us? And then they actually look at his face and like they're like actually shook by the look of crazed look in his eyes, thirsting for revenge. And he's like screaming, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And like the, the kid did, you know, Thor, Thorfinn looked like. He was ready to go. And like if you if you look at him in the opening scenes, the opening theme, like you you see his face progression towards like the the time skip. So I don't think we we might get like a time skip towards next episode, like from like at the end, or we might get it episode six. But we're gonna get a time skip soon. Will we though? Yeah, yeah. The the opening scene shows him through like two more different ages. I think. I don't know. It's definitely different. We'll see. Who knows? It's faster than um, Kaim. Ka- yeah, I um, yeah, it was kind of uh, kind of um, one of the things I did like. Was when he challenged his ass glad to the battle. I was like, I didn't know I was a leader because he's like, I could smell it. And I was like, ooh, okay. He just knew. Whoa. So, yeah. So, yeah, it was a good fight. And I really enjoyed it. Um, now, my good sir. And I would, I would say, yeah. And then the little Thorfinn, he's like, why did my dad have to die? Your dad died because you snuck on the ship because you thought it'd be cool to go to war. <laughs> if we had the hostage, he could have been did that. Nah, he would have happened. just grabbed one of the other boys, but Thorfinn was the weakest one, but the, really, the Thor's died because he didn't want to uh, kill. Thor's died because he didn't want to kill Asklad. <laughs> Even though they wouldn't have let him go anyway. Yeah, I would say the, um... No, nah, it was all his fault. If he wasn't there, the other boys would have at least been paying attention and wouldn't have been overpowered as much. Yo, they I mean, did they might nothing. Have died in the process. Dude, Bjorn had his back turned to all four of them. They did nothing to help Thorfinn. Yeah, they helped, they helped poor Bjorn. They could have just stabbed yeah. him in the neck or something. <laughs> Absolutely zero. Oh, this, yeah. is pl- this is plot progression <laughs> because all four of them could have did something about this. Yeah, and I'm like, man. But yeah, gave him a little signal to fire and lit the boy up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was all Thorfinn's fault. He shouldn't have been on the ship. I can That's accept that. That's why your daddy died. You made him weak because he would have been willing to let, risk all of their lives because they were soldiers and they weren't a boy. But yeah. Um, I did like the, the the moment when he was like, oh, um, I'm still weak because I still need a sword. I was like, oh, man. He's like, I'm not a true warrior. I'm like, yeah, might not be one now. That's the opposite of what uh, Thorfinn thinks. He's like, yo, I'm about to sword all of you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, like you have to see. Um, you have to see when I grow up. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, mm. I'm like, oh, man. In hindsight, I'm glad you didn't watch that uh, anime that I picked because I think it's giving me aristocrat vibes. Yeah, it's terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Anything you want to talk about, Herb? Yeah, I'm going to give a few words to my boy Jin Sung Woo. My man. Yeah, he finally got the reins off. The architect put on there. He's strong now. He had all the peoples there. Had his little date with um, with uh, I forget the the woman's name. Chow. Yeah, Chow. But yeah. Cha. I'm sorry, Cha. Cha. Yeah, Cha. 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 Slide. Cha. When my man told the Frost Monarch to wait right here, I didn't allow the beast to go away. 
Yeah. I was like, okay. I was like, I see you. Uh, and he killed him with like four hits. <laughs> I was like, dang. Yeah, he said, yeah, I'll forgive you if you can survive the amount of hits you gave me. <laughs> yeah. I think it was, um, what also was a sad part was when his, his father was there. Aww. Yeah. And he he protected him, but then he was like dying. And he's like, I. He's like, yeah, I ain't um didn't want you to see me here because you know um, a, a parent shouldn't leave twice for for the child. I'm like, you didn't leave, you just got sucked up in there, and then they um they 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 spit you out. You got burdened with boy. responsibilities. Yeah, he couldn't he couldn't sustain the light anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like he, he his father should have made entrance like two farms ago. Um, after he escaped, he should have just been out. Like, oh, at least seeing his presence in the world once or twice. Mm-hmm. Cause he, what he's been doing all that time, just sitting there chilling. He's not trying to thwart any armies or anything, or or help out people to get stronger for the fight. Like, well, he on, seemed like is- he was chasing the monarchs, but he should have been like. If the foreshadowing was true and, like, he actually knew that Jin Woo was as strong as he is, he should have been, like, back in Korea trying to help. Help get even stronger. Yeah, like, you, you could have done something more than, like, show up at the end to prolong. Yeah. yeah. And maybe if he had did that, like, he wouldn't even need to die. Like, he could have fought alongside him, but... Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm just like man. But I do that that uh that one Chinese person. I forget his name. The top hunter of China. Zhang Ling or something with, like that. Yeah, I messed with him though because he was like, I can't I can't let these phonies just keep trying to do this because when I was trying to help them out, they was questioning why. And he, he sent them all away. I was like, yeah, I see you guy. Can I feel the same way? Yeah, he's I fucked with. I did. He's one of the characters that like. Obviously, right now, it's kind of, like, um, too late because he respects Jin Woo so much. But, like, he was one of those characters earlier when Jin Woo was at the, like, Ameri- it was in America. They was mm-hmm. like, yo, are they setting up a fight between these two? And then it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's too late to set up a fight between these two. Yeah. My man wholeheartedly respects Jin Woo now. Yeah. And Hunter, <laughs> just Hunter looking Song. at, the, like, the beast, yeah. I'm like, man, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty really strong. So, but yeah, I, uh... Yo, guys, I can't believe that I'm obsessed with something that Irby is actually enjoying. Can I just say, that, like, his commitment to solo leveling. Granted, it's always a little behind me, but that's okay. That's because I, I wait till I get my free credits. Yeah, it's, like, it's okay, though. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me, baby. I'm patient. I'll wait up. Well, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. For free credits, gets it. But I yeah. shit you not, Irby, if you read random webtoons, a lot of them have the same fucking concept. Hunters, S-Rank, Soul in Korea, Dungeon Breaks, a lot of them have the same concept. It's like yeah, Isekais um, in Japan. I, I saw another one. It was... um. What was it? It was, uh, I was like, oh, this system reborn or something where he gets to choose the power. I was like, oh, this is like solo leveling. So I was like, yeah. Um, is it, is it like he's in like the Tower of Trials? I have no idea. No, but no, I, like, no I don't think that's it. Never mind. It's, it's like a group of them, and then like he has a choice to either become like the strongest or something. Like, I was like, oh, this is. Solo leveling adjacent. Mm -hmm. A a lot of them are like that. But that's why... That's why when solo leveling gets finally animated, if it's done correctly, it's going to be like... It's going to immediately be a popular anime because, like, there's nothing currently out like it. There's tons of isekais, but there's nothing like the solo leveling right now. On webtoons in Korea, there's a ton of manhwas like solo leveling but as far as i know there's no anime like it yet interesting not that i've heard of anyway i haven't seen an anime where 
you know, people get awakened, they do dungeon breaks, blah, 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 E rank to S rank, because the main character always has to end up as an S rank somehow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I don't know, we'll see. Um, anything else you want to talk about, Irby? No, no, I think that's about it. Um, all right, let's wrap it up then. You want to send us off? No, nah, dog, it's all you. <clears throat> All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next week. Peace. Peace.